because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. exciting to be with you all today. <laughs> yeah, I've just, um, not really <laughs> entirely sure where to start, but I've just had, yeah, there was, I guess, a miracle I wanted to share with, uh, with everyone where, uh, I, I started sharing some shows ago that, um, that I just had this prayer, like, I didn't, I don't want to touch the mic. <laughs> that I didn't want to prove myself anymore. Like I didn't want to, you know, try to do something better, something out of this way of being loved or being liked or getting what I think I wanted or anything like that. And I, yeah, I just had this that prayer in my heart, and that I wanted whatever it seemed like. Yeah, that I was desiring, or I thought I needed, or I thought I wanted. Like I just wanted to come of it on its own to me and you know again I didn't want to make it happen I didn't want to force anything and, and <laughs> it actually recently happened to me in a, in a pretty huge way and and actually it happened in such a way that it was it felt so surreal for several days it's like did I actually not like is this happening because I I didn't make it happen it just felt so weird like oh it actually worked <laughs> you know like my prayer, you know, I just felt like I totally surrendered to it all, and and yeah, so <laughs> I feel like I'm skipping ahead a little bit, <clears throat> but yeah, I guess so. The main thing is that this this uh, actually relationship I've been desiring, or I felt like I felt really drawn to with um, with Yuta, <laughs> uh, it just kind of. I want to say came in or kind of happened. It just felt obvious. Uh, I think it's just two weeks ago or something like that that it came in, and, and <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess it was it was just it felt really miraculous because I felt this love and this connection with Yuta for a long time. And actually, we used to be married, and um, and about two years ago, we uh, <laughs> kind of like jumping here. <laughs> we uh, kind of dissolved our marriage symbol because it just didn't feel like it was needed anymore. It felt maximized. And and that felt actually really good at that time when, when that happened. That's like a whole parable in and of itself. It just felt like actually, oh wow, this is everything I wanted because then it turned into more of a collaboration with our projects. And, and yeah, it was just this miraculous thing. And then, yeah, since several months ago, um, actually while I was kind of touring in Europe, Yuta just kept coming to my mind and, and I had all this love, but, you know, of course I was traveling it, you know, and I was away and I didn't think it'd be given. And then, you know, different things just kind of came in, signs and symbols, but I don't feel like I'd share them right now, maybe later in the show or maybe another time, but, uh, to share some of the synchronicities and miracles, but, um, so yeah, I just had kind of this love and I and I would just share with Yuta every so often when I was having these thoughts about relationship and, and it was always like, oh, beautiful. It was like it wasn't felt like it was given or it wasn't like, you know, the right time or whatever. And, and uh, then I was actually recently supporting at the mystery school and <laughs> on basically two of the nights I had these kind of what they felt like intense nightmares. And it just had to do with basically feeling this huge, uh, in my dream, this huge rejection of, like, Utah towards me. And I woke up just like, oh, my God. Like, what was that? Like, that felt like that came out of nowhere. I didn't even, you know, I wasn't even, like, I had no idea, like, what flushed it up. Yeah. It seemed like it was totally coming out of nowhere. And, and I just had, 
yeah, I, I like woke up like three in the morning or five in the morning, just like, okay, I'm, you know, f from this nightmare of just feeling like totally disconnected, feeling like, oh, I'm not loved or I don't know. It's just this thing that I had no idea what seemed to trigger it. And I think it was after that, that second time that I actually ended up having a, um, yeah, just I, I felt to join with uh, Francis. And that was offered, and I ended up just kind of sharing everything with her. I just, again, I didn't actually really feel like I had any thought of like, oh, I, I want a relationship or I want to make this happen or anything. I just shared all this kind of love and all this healing and everything just over the, the past like two, like year or something since the last time I had had kind of a, a deep joining with Francis. And basically, next thing you know, I, it, you know, I hear. Yuta feels, you know, so the next day I hear that Yuta feels the same thing, feels a relationship and all of it. And, and it just so, like, again, that's the part that felt so surreal for me, like the miracle of it, that I had this prayer and actually it came in so much on its own of like, I really didn't feel like I made it happen. And that's why I thought like, it actually felt like, is this given? Because I actually didn't make it happen. It was this weird, like, I don't know. It was like this other pattern of like, oh, you know, things should only happen if you're, you know, you, you have to be involved. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Like this old <laughs> thought we used to That's have. That's what we used to say, yeah. That's what we used to say in our business stuff. Like, <laughs> if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Like, I got to make it happen. I'm in control of my life. You know, it's like, that's where it's all coming from. And and so I, I just knew for days, it was like, whoa. Like I felt a little like even disoriented. Like, wow, I, like this is what I wanted. And, and it came in by itself, so. Yeah, that was huge for me. Yeah, there was like some kind of doubt that like maybe I controlled the situation and made it happen and you know, it wasn't given but but really it's like I think we're learning more and more like we can't actually control anything. You know, David always says like the script is written and what I like to think of it as is like a movie analogy, you know, and I, I've probably mentioned this before because I just love it so much. It's like you're sitting in the in the metaphysical movie theater with with Jesus right and you're just watching the movie of your life and and then there's Andy on the screen and he's saying these words and talking and on a show called Modern Mystics <laughs> and then and then you can get caught up in the movie and think oh that's actually me and I can actually control what seems to happen next and what I'm gonna say and how I move my hands this way and this and that and and really it's like we can't control any of that <laughs> you know <laughs> All you can really do is um, decide who do you want to watch the movie with, you know, mm. with the Holy Spirit, or do you want to watch it with the ego? And really, watching it with the ego means you identify with the character on the screen and with everything that seems to happen. Then, and then that's the human condition. And the next thing you know, it's like, okay, well, I want this relationship. I'm gonna try to make this happen. And then, and then it happens. And then you're thinking, oh, I actually made that happen. But really, all of it is part of this huge like pre-arranged script that was really like over in an instant um, but that seems to be drawn out because of the belief in time so that's what we're on doing right yeah. yeah that was so cool because you mentioned kind of this I had had this big sense of doubt actually after it came in because I thought wait there's no way I had a preference for this and it came, like and it came in and I was like whoa like I had all this doubt and fear come up because it was this thought of like I think in A Course in Miracles, Jesus is saying like, yeah, if you're trusting in your own strength, you have every reason to be fearful because that's no real strength. The ego has no real strength. It's, what were you calling a puff of? A pile of dust. A pile of a dust. Pile of dust. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's really nothing. It's this shabby self-concept that has no validity or real foundation. You know, it's actually, I think I've heard to it referred to as, it's like a, it's a bastard, you know, it has no source it has no real source that's why it's meaningless and yeah so <laughs> so i had all this doubt because again i i thought again like i had somehow made it happen i just was like questioning myself did i you know did i manipulate the situation did i do something like that and and then just i i felt to join with francis again just kind of share all of it and i just loved what she shared because from what she shared I just had this insight again to myself because I'd had these deep senses of doubts months ago about 
like, oh, again, with another thing, did I, like, did I make it happen? And I couldn't seem to shake the doubt. It just kept coming up and up and up. And, and I realized, I had, it's hard for me to verbalize it, but I, yeah, I'll try. I had this pretty big insight on myself that, oh, yeah, all this fear and all this doubt was because I thought, like, I had these resistances towards kind of the present situations, and I thought, like I had kind of gone on my own instead of following the guidance of the Spirit of Jesus. And, and you know, that's it's actually the deeper you go, like the deeper I've gone, it feels more and more fearful to, to kind of go on your own. You know, you, feel, you really like start to really rely, you know, you become like little children and rely on the Spirit, like the guidance of the Spirit to, um, yeah, to kind of show you, you know, what is it you would have me do now? And somehow with what, yeah, with what she shared, I, I just, I could have that insight that, oh my God, that's where all the fear was coming from, thinking I was doing it on my own instead of with the Spirit, instead of realizing actually, no, it's all been orchestrated. It's all been of the guidance, like you can relax. It's like, it's, it's given, you know, it's, you couldn't have made it happen. It's His plan, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't actually mess it up. And, yeah, I mean, that just, I immediately felt this sense of, like, relief, and I haven't really had those doubts since, but, yeah, there's just something so powerful, like, I just could really feel from that point on, like, I, I really, as, you know, as much as possible every day, I just really want to pray to, like, give my days over, yeah, give my days over to the Spirit, you know, like, what would you have me do? I don't want to hold on to any preferences, I don't want to fall into this thing of, like, thinking, I'm going against the given plan. And yeah, I just that just felt powerful. And I felt like I I really wanted to actually share like my insights around even relationship. Like what I've kind of what I've learned before, so to speak, or like the insights I've gained before and actually what I've really been gaining from it in these past two weeks that have actually felt like very powerful for me. Yeah. Um yeah, the quote that comes to mind right now is, well, a paraphrase quote is, whenever, <laughs> or whenever you want anything from a brother or a sister or whatever, he is no long, he is your brother no longer. I think is mm-hmm. is how it's said around that, <laughs> and that's just it's just it's been really powerful for me because that's been coming in to my mind lately just with the thought of like anytime I want anything from Utah or from Andy or from anyone it's like I'm no longer seeing them as an equal Mm -hmm. like they have something I don't I'm incomplete without them it's like they really become an idol they don't actually become a symbol of love anymore I've like I've transformed them to something that's no longer helpful and I don't know it's just it's it's been really in my mind lately I've been keeping that there because it's like I I want to yeah I want to heal like every aspect of my mind I want to just actually like keep the purpose out front you know like lead with love and and I've just been seeing like with with Yuta as well it's it's been this great training ground of like okay well what are relationships for you know I've been I've been praying on that and actually everything I kept hearing and I keep being shown is actually if you think there are anything to get from, you're wrong, you know. If you think, oh, I'm in this so that I can be comfortable, I can, you know, oh, I can be with someone who's beautiful, you know, anything like that, you know, like, oh, I can raise my sense of value or whatever, it's like, you're wrong. That's just not what it's for. Actually, the proper use of relationship is to learn to truly give, is to learn to love unconditionally, to extend without trying to receive any sense of reciprocity, it's it's actually you're there to fully give that's all it's for you're not there to actually get anything from them and that's actually how you you know you wake up through the relationship it's it's like this total letting go it's this constant releasing of any expectation of oh it should go this way you know they should be that way it's actually no what can i give that's like the prayer behind it all you know what miracles would you have me perform spirit like like yeah. anytime <laughs> yeah and why is that because your brother is a mirror 
You yeah. Know, it's like you literally are your brother, so it's like... Yeah, like our intro you, would normally say. <laughs> you can't get anything from a mirror because then you're just seeing yourself as lacking because it's yeah. a mirror. It's like so imagine it's you're like, really at a mirror. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, why can't, why can't I like grab the mirror? Yeah, that's, like, why, <laughs> that's why you have to give because then you're extending to yourself and, you know, mind only extends to itself. So it's like you can't get from, you know, because it, it's like what I was talking about on the one of the last shows it's like whatever's in the projector it's like if there's lack in the projector you're just going to see it in the reflection and if your brother's your reflection then it's like we're talking about um whatever you fail to give to a situation no whatever you fail to perceive in the situation is what you're failing to give something yeah, like that you know whenever you perceive but, something lacking from a situation is right. what you have failed to give to it yeah right so yeah it just comes back to you know the world's a reflection of your mind so you have to give and teach what you would learn it's like there's no other way you're not going to get anything from a reflection and um yeah i think i i even learned that recently you know there's few there were a few attractions in the in the house in the canvas house and and um yeah i guess i was really like praying into it it's like what it, what is this it's like every time i would see uh Lila, I would feel like this, this fear, like the stab of fear. And I was like, what is that? But at the same time, there was this attraction. So I was like, okay, there's something, there's a call for healing here somewhere. And then, so, you know, we practice no private thoughts, um, no people pleasing. So, you know, whenever something would come up, I would express that. And then the other day, I we were just sitting at lunch. And, um, and yeah, first I was... I was triggered by something that someone had said to me and then I was actually really excited because of that because right. I was like yes this is like an inroads to a deeper release of something you yeah know? you're so excited that's yeah. beautiful that, that's like the happy learner right there like oh I've got someone to work with I've got <laughs> yeah. some rage <laughs> yeah exactly because I could feel those days like there was something down there like there was this rage down there but it, it felt so like non-specific that I couldn't really get in touch with it. So I was like, okay, I, ne I need specifics to work with here. And then, uh, and then Jessica said something to me and I felt it come up. I was like, and then I was like, oh, interesting. And then afterwards I was like excited. I was like, yes, I got something to work with. And mm. then we went to lunch and we held an expression session during lunch where you know everyone takes turns just expressing private thoughts and we don't just say every private thought but it's the ones that really feel like they have a charge and yeah. the ones we don't want to say especially that's a good sign yeah, so we're presently on that's your heart, a really yeah. good sign that um you should probably express it <laughs> because those are the ones you believe have meaning when really all the ego's thoughts are meaningless mm -hmm. so yeah i was um yeah i had expressed about that little trigger with the whole rage thing and and, and that was great and then Basically, you know, we just sit at a table and I was just seeing in my mind, okay, um, do I feel clear with everyone? Because that's a really good practice, you know, like, do I feel clear with everyone that's around me right now? Is there any charge with anyone, any grievance, any triggers, judgments, anything that might need to be exposed? And so, yeah, I exposed that with Jessica. I felt better. Her image, like, got clear in my mind. And then, and then I could feel, like, some static over on, like, the right side of my field of view and then I looked over and it was Lilo and I was like oh okay maybe I'll I'll express about that too and I just expressed yeah I just feel this fear like I don't know what it is but you know just keeping such an open-mindedness and then um yeah and Greg he's, Greg Donner he was kind of facilitating mm -hmm. that expression session and he said yeah uh, I just feel like it's just fear of love and then and, and I noticed while Greg was talking, Lila was, I don't know, maybe she wasn't even conscious of this, but she was like leaning forward, like looking at me. And I could see that out of the side of my view. So I just look at her and I just look in her eyes for a while. And then like, yeah, I don't even know what happened, but I just felt like my, my heart opened up and like stuff was just like fading in my mind, like dissolving. And then my hands started vibrating and then, uh, yeah, this love started pouring and I was like, whoa, like I did not know like that was the problem, mm. you know, or yeah, I just did not know like anything really. And, and then, um, and then, yeah, lo and behold, first time I'm using that <laughs> phrase, but 
lo and behold, after that, it's like the whole thought of like, oh, I want a relationship with this person, like with Lilo, that that dropped. And then, then after that, every time I would see her, I just felt it like this love, like no more fear, no more stab of fear. And that's just the practical application of the course, you know, mm. exposing the private thoughts, the judgments, whatever, and then following the guidance. Okay, I feel a promise. Let's look at her now. It's like we don't know what is the most helpful guidance. It's like only the Holy Spirit can tell us and mm. our job is just to listen and follow and that will lead to the heart opening experience. Because mm. yeah. actually yeah. I was sitting right in between like actually you and Lilo at the, at the table during the expression session and when you looked over and your kind of hands were tickling you, it's like I could feel it. It's like, oh, like it's like when, when someone's heart opens up, it's like everyone's heart opens up because I was right there and like, oh, that feels so good. Like I just, yeah. I could feel my own heart opening up like, you know, that's like the most beautiful thing when you see your your brothers, sisters, you know, mighty companions, like, you know, cracking through the fear, uh, yeah, opening up to love, having mere, it's like, yeah, there's nothing more precious, nothing more beautiful than that. And it's like when, when one is healed, everyone is healed with them. Because really it's, you know, the metaphysics of it is, it's all of one mind, but I don't know, the experience of it is, it was, I don't know. Like, words feel pretty shabby towards the actual experience of it. Yeah, and I just want to mention, too, it's like, on the spiritual journey, the seeming journey, it's like, we're healing our mind, it seems like there's progress, and and along the way, the ego is, like, trying to follow us the whole way. He's, he's, like, right there trying to interfere, get in the way, or take credit for the healing, or anything, anything it can. So, I just felt inspired to read a little part of the course that talks about arrogance. Mm. Yeah, I just love this little section here. And this is, uh, oh yeah, this is in the workbook. Lesson 186, Salvation of the World Depends on Me. And even the first sentence is just amazing because, you know, the ego would read that as like, salvation of the world depends on me, like me personally, like it depends on Andy. But like the hero like, of the dream or something. But that's actually the arrogance that the Course is talking about. And the first sentence says, here's the statement that will one day take all arrogance away from every mind. And it's like, wow, automatically it's, it might reverse the meaning of what you thought even the title of that lesson meant. It's like, okay, wow, I don't even know like what really arrogance is if that would take arrogance away from every mind. And then on the next page, Paragraph 6 is what I wanted to really read. So it says, um, Arrogance makes an image of yourself that is not real. It is this image which quails and retreats in terror, as the voice for God assures you that you have the strength, the wisdom, and the holiness to go beyond all images. You are not weak, as is the image of yourself. You are not ignorant and helpless. Sin cannot tarnish the truth in you and misery can come not near the holy home of God. All of this the voice for God relates to you, and as he speaks, the image trembles and seeks to attack the threat it does not know, sensing its basis crumble. Let it go. Salvation of the world depends on you, and not upon this little pile of dust. What can it tell the holy Son of God? Why need he be concerned with it at all? Yeah. Yes, anytime we think we're personally doing anything, personally healing, or personally responsible for the awakening or anything, it's mm. like, then it's this little pile of dust that actually thinks it has control over something. Mm. And it's really just a past thought and a past image and has no power whatsoever. And as long as we identify with that, like that's what the weakness is, and, and that's where the arrogance comes in. Mm. So I just, I just love that, like a little pile of dust. It's, a, it's a, okay. Right. Yeah. Let me not identify with a little pile of dust. It just feels really like humbling. Mm. It's like, right, I just, I loved how you were like, yeah, you know, if I, if I start feeling any area, I'm just going to start re referring to myself as a little pile of the, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, that, that, that might work, you know, just, yeah. it's like, no, really, like, without the spirit, we're nothing, it's, 
Yeah. It's mm. like you have zero percent. You know, David said right. this on an online retreat. He right. said that you have zero percent contribution to the awakening. Like the Holy Spirit has a hundred percent contribution to the awakening. Yeah. It's like we just have to get out of the way. You know, so that's that's really not a contribution at all. Yeah. Because it's a everything stepping out. <laughs> we're doing, like personally, is actually blocking the healing. Mm. Well, the healing happens when we let the Holy Spirit heal the mind. Yeah. So it's like, wow, there's really like a humbleness and humility in that. Yeah. It's almost like, I was thinking of like, you know, you're trying to open like a, I don't know, I was thinking of a jar and you're like pushing down on the lid of the jar and the, the jar is like the unconscious mind. All this stuff has to come out, right? We're pushing down the lid on that unconscious mind and the Holy Spirit's just waiting for us to let our hand off of the jar and he's just going to take the lid off really easily. But we're like pushing our hand down on the lid of the jar and being like, I want to awaken. And it's like, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit's like, all you have to do is just, just let go. You actually can't do this. You just have to let go. And then I can take the lid off and, right. and it'll be healed just like that. Yeah. And I just, I feel like I remember the first time I saw this video from David and it was just a, an amazing reminder. It was basically, exactly what it was called but the gist of it was you cannot wake yourself you can only allow yourself to be awakened you know that's what Jesus is telling us from a, from a Course in Miracles and and that's that's it it's like our our contribution even though it's like zero is really to like not hide not protect any dark thought from the light you know and however that's symbolized in your life whether it's mighty companions that live around you or that you Skype call with or if you live in a spiritual community it's like it's just not hiding and being willing to follow the guidance that's given and yeah I could just yeah I could just feel that so much like we've been having these powerful sessions here just even with us of like journaling and you know we even had one the other night of like oh yeah like write down basically everything that you know you would normally hide from the spirit and just like really like give it over and I just yeah, I felt, yeah, something just felt in my mind, yeah, really profound with that, with, because there's even one part like, okay, how would you feel, like, how would you feel if you actually did share, or, or, or maybe it was, if you didn't share this thought, like, how would you feel, and I was like, oh, well, disconnected, non-expansive, you know, I want to feel my heart open, and somehow with, with all of that, just kind of writing it all down, what, my fears were of exposing my private thoughts and all of that stuff. I started to feel like, is that it? Oh, that's all I'm afraid of? Like, wow, I can, I can do this. Because yeah, it's like hard expansion, everything, or closed down for just not, I don't know. It just, it just made it seem like, wow, it's worth it. You know, healing is worth it. You know, and we, and we don't know how. Again, it's with that whole hiding, it's this thought of like, oh, yeah. Like, I can do it myself. Like, I know how to heal. Like, I can figure it all out. And if I watch enough, if I read enough about special relationship, if I go about it intellectually, like, I can get him. The Spirit's like, no, just, you know, reveal it to me. Give it to me. Follow me. And I'll bring you home. <laughs> that feels like a really good non-ending to the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there an online retreat next week? or No, I think it's two weeks. I, maybe two weeks from now. Okay. Well, two Kristen might now. tell us. But yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll <laughs> see you guys us. next week either way. Yeah. On the online retreat or on our show. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.